Hi, folks. Ryan Mallory here. I was up late last night looking at some public data on jail releases and who's currently in our jail. Um, that information is on a web page that I'll give uh, linked in this post. So that data has to do with releases, uh, what kind of people were released from the jail, and then also who is currently in the jail. Um, when I take a look at that data, it's interesting how much COVID restrictions have affected that. So this is public jail data and it's fresh data. It's last week in April. Um, and in that, we know that our normal jail has 305 beds or so, depending on uh, how they arrange things. And with COVID, that is limited to 220 to 230 beds, also depending on what they need to reserve and those kind of things. That's a 26% reduction uh, in the beds in a jail that was already too small for the quarter million people that live in Jackson County. Now let's take a look at that, and that's 80 beds. What does 80 beds mean to this community? Uh, 80 beds means that there are people being released way faster than they normally would, and it increases the recidivism rate, which is the rate people reoffend at. Um, as of April 27th, there were 244 inmates in the jail, and um, that's called adults in custody. Apparently, there's some um, wording there that's important to people, but inmates is what that's been traditionally called. Uh, that's during the day when that report was ran, and this report is available to media and the public, and I'm making it available to you as well. But let's think about that. For those 244 individuals that are currently in the jail, they account for 1,976 charges. And when I look at those charges, it's bad stuff. You know, there's Michael Bacala in there that lit Phoenix on fire during the Almeida fire. Uh, he's got a slew of charges. There are pedophiles, murderers, rapists, um, some pretty dang violent gang people in our jail. Uh, I feel like our... Um, our jail is keeping the right people for the space they have. But when we talk about COVID, 50% of the releases were due to the COVID restrictions and them not being able to put people too close together or somebody having some health concerns and not being able to be around that many people. And they, they just end up right back out on the street, often offending in a lot of those cases. Um, now, let's weight that information. And this may not be it physically accurate to what happened, but it's something to think about. If there are 80 beds that cannot be filled based on the 1,976 charges for the 244 people in the jail, that's likely 518 charges that went without any repercussions and went back on, onto the street where we know only one or two in 10 to 12 cases per day actually show up to talk to a judge. So they will fail to reappear, uh, appear repeatedly. And that isn't all of those people released. I realize some of them get things taken care of and that's fine, but that's pretty low number of people that get it taken care of. And that's, you know, definitely shown by the next highest number beyond 84 people that were released in about a week for COVID mandates, 27 were released because they served their sentence. That's a good thing. And I hope they're on to something better in their lives. Uh, some were transferred to community justice. That's the work release center and talent. Um, others bailed out. Uh, nine were released on their own recognizance. Uh, seven were QuickBooks book and release uh, fast because they don't have the space. Uh, some were charges not filed. Some went to Coffee Creek straight to prison with y'all and transported out of state. That was for something they got picked up on here and they had warrants that were extraditable. Uh, holds, and that's a hold for a different state or county. Uh, jail capacity release, there was one of those. Uh, when there isn't COVID, there are more of those. Uh, extradited federal uh, federal custody release, those kind of things. Think about this. The citizens did not want a jail district, and that's fine. It was a very expensive, and um, it's a lot of money to the average person to look at, but it's, uh, you know, also what 
they were trying to do to catch us up uh, based on a jail bit, built in the early 1980s that was obsolete physically when it was built and um, definitely doesn't serve the growing population here. So uh, this isn't the sheriff's fault. This isn't jail deputies' fault. This isn't the DA's fault. Uh, judge's fault. Nobody's releasing people because they want to. There are specific lists of times for charges that jails and uh, definitely judges normally use to sentence people as well. And if there isn't space to sentence them, uh, there have been judges that said in public meetings that they couldn't give the normal sentence and they don't regularly give the Norman normal sentence for that list. So as citizens, we're, we have to make a decision. I mean, we're going to have to make a decision here. We're either okay with the growing crime rate and um, you know, whatever it says on paper, we all watch pretty close and it definitely grows. Every time somebody has a car stolen, we, we chance a citizen that was working hard um, finding despair themselves in our community because uh, the recently released person crashes their car after they steal it. It was their only car to get to work. They jump the bus, they miss it once uh, trying to get to work. And next thing you know, they're unemployed and can't pay for their place and possibly end up homeless or have to take a loan that they didn't have before to get another car. These kind of things uh, and, and the violence and the things that get worse as it grows are something we're either going to have to accept or maybe there's some lower mid-range solution to the jail. Some of the things that I've heard are uh, that we may be able to build some smaller jail space so we won't be able to catch up or plan for the future, but at least we'll do a little better now. A hundred beds could go a long way. The other thing that I heard was the work release center was originally secure facility, a secure facility for inmates, for adults in custody. Uh, right now, that's the work release center, and they can run away from it if they want to, but uh, I haven't seen that a lot in the last year or so. Uh, there used to be more of it. Maybe that's something that can be converted for less money. Maybe the citizens are willing to step up a little bit to try to make that problem a little bit better because we surely don't want all of these people headed back out on the, to the street to reoffend or um, stay in their addiction. Sometimes some time in jail clears somebody's mind enough, allows them to detox and be introduced to better choices. And we've talked to that, about that a lot, but if you wanna look over this data yourself or look over the numbers that I'm talking about in this video, I put them all up on a webpage for you and that will be linked in the post. Thanks for tuning in to the Scanner Group Crowdsourced Crime and Safety Podcast with Ryan Mallory and Jared Bannery from Thief Hunter Labs. Make sure to subscribe today for notifications about the next show. Visit us at www.thiefhunterlabs.com or on Facebook as Thief Hunter Labs in the search bar.